Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sean Layden and Sid Schumann. I'm so glad you could join us here at PlayStation Experience. Thank you so much for coming. Sean. Is this a furniture convention? <laughs> uh -huh. I think we're going to play a game. We're going to kind of move our way back and forth across the different segments here. Right, and hopefully ending up with those nice postmodern gray uh, <laughs> office chairs. There. This is awesome. Yeah. In all seriousness, folks, it is unbelievable to be here again at another PlayStation Experience. So exciting to have all of you here. I really. Give yourselves a round of applause for joining us here in Anaheim. This is, wow. the, uh, this is the fourth one. It's the fourth one. And I can't think of a better way to close out this highly memorable year yep. than with my friends. So Correct. thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Really. Yeah, it's incredible. And Sean, it's been a heck of a year. Wow, hasn't it been just? <laughs> uh, it's been a crazy year, 2017. I think we saw a lot of great game releases. Um, uh, any Uncharted fans out there? <laughs> so Lost Legacy was awesome. Uh, we're certainly proud and pleased with what our, our friends in Amsterdam pulled together with Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> and then without telling anybody, just kind of slipped the Frozen Wilds out there. Yeah. Because that's what they do. Just sneak it out there. I mean, what's great too is the year got off to such an incredible start. Resident Evil 7, one of my absolute favorites this year. Yes. If you haven't played that in PlayStation VR, you haven't played it. <laughs> uh, Persona 5, Near Automata. Right. Yeah. Incredible year, incredible games. One of the strongest years, uh, game lineups I've seen in years. My personal favorite, one of them anyway, is um, Everybody's Golf. <laughs> That's a terrific game. Can we get some love game. for my golf game, please? Gravity Rush 2. Gravity I mean, Rush 2, yeah. 
Yep. We could sit here all night literally okay. listing all the incredible games that came out this year. Right. But we've got a little bit more. We've got other things to do. That's right. Yes, that's right. Uh, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's just it's such a special year. And I mean, there, then we had Paris Games Week. I mean, you know. Went really well. We saw the reveal of uh, Sucker Punch's new opus. We should um, have. Ghost. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, yeah, that's going to be great. We saw some of that in the trailer right now. But um, there was a lot that happened in 2017. And we can talk about that. And we can, we, we can share some, some, some of our memories of that with everybody here. Um, but 2018 is going to be another tremendous year for PlayStation. Uh, both in PS4 and PSVR. And we're going to talk a little bit about 2018 here tonight. We're also going to bring you closer to some of the world's top developers right here. I think it's something that makes PlayStation experience unique and special. As you folks can be right here with us, all of our friends right here. Thus all the furniture. That's, and all this furniture right here. So we're going to try to build a super group up here. <laughs> uh, you can tell us what you think at the end, but I think we have a special night here ahead of us. We're going to have some old friends dropping by, Sean. Yeah, we're going to have um, our group chairman, Andy House, is in the house. That's right. And he'll be joining us later with, uh, with our old friend, uh, Mark Cerny. That's right, PS4 system architect. Mark Cerny's dropping by. Right. Do you guys, are you guys fans of God of War? You like God of War? OK. okay. Corey Barlog from Santa Monica Studio, he's going to come in and give us a development update here tonight. Right. The, the taxi's outside with the meter running, but Corey's going to run in here, <laughs> deliver a report, and then get right back to the studio and get that, uh, get that work done. But, and we're having Media Molecule. Yeah, Media Molecule. Did yeah. you guys check out the Game Awards last night? You see that new trailer? Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, they're doing great stuff. We're also going to take another look at Concrete Genie here a little Definitely. bit later tonight, one we're all very, very excited yeah. about, another one we announced at Paris this year. So we're going to have some updates on 2018 games. We're going to take a peek or two at the PlayStation Experience show floor, which I know a lot of you are going to be excited to check out over the weekend. And there might be a surprise or two in store, Sean. What do you think? I think there's more than a surprise or two, All indeed. Right. And we have some shots of that? We're going to go to that now? Or? Yeah, we're going to. So we got a big weekend here. Okay. And actually, I'm, one of the things I'm personally super excited for are the panels we've yeah. got going on yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, it's a great lineup. It's a really yeah. killer yeah. panel lineup. I think the best we've ever had. I mean, look at this stuff here. We've got Naughty Dog doing not one, but two panels. The cast of right. The Last of Us 2 will be right here, right on this stage, actually. You'll be able to see them. You'll be able to see all the Uncharted voice actors for the big 10-year anniversary. Sucker Punch stopping by, Media Molecule stopping by. Super excited that Justin Roiland and William Pugh are going to be stopping by. Oh, that'd be I'm cool. a huge Rick and Morty fan. <laughs> I can't wait to see what these guys are up to with the Counting Plus. So it's just a lot of great stuff. Yes. And then, can we talk about that show floor? Yes, the show floor, we were taking a look at that earlier today. It's like nothing we've done before. Um, yeah, we have some photos, I think, too, if we could uh, show Oh, can we put this up yeah. on the screen? Oh. <laughs> Days gone. I mean, that's an experience right there. Well, get that's, your phone ready. Yeah, that's the entryway, so you're going to have to find a way to get, <laughs> to get through that. Um, Are they ticklish? We will we, find out We're tomorrow. going to find out, yeah. Another and, one. And one of them is a real human. You have to find <laughs> out which, which one that is. Another one I'm really excited about, it's incredible, Shadow of the Colossus. Wait do you see this. <laughs> Tell now, them what they get to do, Sean. So what you get to do, this is one of the key colossi uh, from the game. You will be able to climb up the back of it and put that sword right into the center of his head. It's the thing you've wanted to do when playing the game. You'll be able to do it now uh, tomorrow at the show. It's incredible. I mean, that's just a taste. There's so much more. It's the biggest show we've done yet. So I hope you all check it out tomorrow and let us know what you think. Got a lot of PlayStation VR here. I know not everyone gets a chance to go on with this. Oh. This is the Inpatient. The Inpatient is here. The Inpatient from Supermassive. Oh, that was nice of Oz to sit in the wheelchair like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you will be taken into this experience via wheelchair, and you will have an asylum uh, experience um, just like it is in the game. They wheel you in, totally they close creepy. the curtain, Trust and you me. play the demo. It's incredible. Yeah. So It's not for the faint of heart. Not at all. So. Uh, around 80 playable PlayStation VR experiences right. here over the weekend. And so lots to see and do on the PlayStation VR front. But actually, Sean, speaking of PlayStation VR, right. I believe we do have a new PlayStation VR game to reveal here tonight. Yes, we do. And I think it's really important, though, to talk about the VR stuff. Get out there over the next couple of days and experience it. Because you, know, you can read about it on the web. You can hear Sid and I talk about it all, all the time. But until you put the headset on and have a gaming experience like that, you'll never really know what it's like. So please, for the next couple of days, get in there and do that. Because we have a new game we're announcing tonight um, called Firewall. Firewall Zero Hour, I think, is the full, is the full title. Um, let's take a look at that. 
Yeah, here we go. This is the first gameplay we're seeing of Firewall. Now, this is actually from the folks at First Contact Entertainment. They're serious shooter developers. This is a team-based 4v4, 4v4 tactical first-person shooter. So attack and defense on the two teams. And there's a huge amount of emphasis being placed on sort of the, the tense motions and movements. It's the pacing is very realistic. Peeking around corners here. We're going to see some of that here in the footage. But just a very early sneak peek for all of you here. Firewall is coming to PlayStation VR. Uh, you'll be able to use either a DualShock or your PlayStation VR aim controller, if you've ever uh, picked up one of those, with Farpoint or something like that. So this is uh, looking mighty promising, I got to say. Oh, it's incredible. It's so tense to be in that four-on-four, yeah. four four, um, you know, trapped in the room, you know, throwing flashbangs and trying to clear rooms out of, this of, is, of enemies. Yeah, this is one we've been wanting to tell folks about for a while, yeah. and I know people who have tried it uh, have, oh, yeah. have really come out yeah. raving. So And it's on the floor. That's right. It's on the floor here. You'll be able to play it this weekend, four-on-four, yeah. four, Firewall. And it will be exclusive to PlayStation VR. So uh, excited to see that. So, Sean, uh, what else do we have on the VR front? Anything else? Uh, we have a gift. And um, a year ago, we launched one of my most favorite games, uh, The Last Guardian. Any Last Guardian fans? <laughs> you know, it was such a seminal moment for my career because I think I've been working on that game my entire career. <laughs> <laughs> And so we were able to ship it last year around this time. And in the meantime, uh, Uedasan and, and the group have come together, and they've made a VR experience based in the world of uh, Last Guardian, where you'll be able to go in there and experience that with, with Trico um, calling, calling the beast and, and moving across a, a level. It's probably, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of gameplay. Uh, but we'll be putting that up on the PlayStation Store. December 12th here in the US and Europe. Uh, and, it, and that's our Christmas present to everybody. Right. So please right. go get it. Next Download week, that. it's free. Yeah. It is actually a standalone experience. Yes. You don't need to actually own The Last Guardian either. So if you've got right. PlayStation VR, you can get The Last Guardian oh, VR demo. Right now. There we yeah. go. Seeing a little footage here. Sean, do you think Trico's feathers are more plush and downy in VR? Well, I think you can only rub them one way. <laughs> um, but yes, plush, plush and downy would be one way to call it. Yeah. There he is. There. And you'll be able to call it. Our fine feathered friend. Yeah. It is, uh, it's something else, it really is. So please, make, make some time during the next couple of days and get in and try this. And then yeah. on December 12th, go home, download it, and I'm play it. enjoy for Christmas. Nice stocking stuffer there. So that's the Last Guardian VR demo. Coming uh, out next week. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> but wait, there's more. There is more, there is more. Um, you know, we like to go back from time to time and um, look at some of our classic catalog games that we have because we believe that, um, you know, a great game is always a great game. And sometimes you have to refresh and bring them back on new platforms because sadly you can't go out and buy a PS1 and, and, and play it. So what we have here is we've taken a game we delivered um, uh, last year. We brought Wipeout back. And now we're going to bring out Wipeout VR. Yeah, let's check out the trailer. Now, this will be an update that you'll be able to download to your copy of Wipeout, and this will add right. the uh, VR capabilities uh, to, the, to, to the game uh, you have. Yeah. yeah. So you have to supply your own air sickness bags. We can't give you any hope of that. Yeah, and the free VR update is coming early 2018, Sean. Yep. That's yep. right. It's on, on schedule. It's on time. Uh, I think a strong start so far to 2018, and I got to say, I'm actually really getting fired up about 2018 because, I mean, we've got Far Cry 5 coming. Early on in the year, really excited for that yeah, one. Yeah, that looks great. Shadow of the Colossus, which yeah. 
And that's I mean, all going to be playable on the show all floor. All playable on the show floor. And, and Shadow of the Colossus is, is being played on PlayStation 4 Pro. And wait till you see that. Yeah. It is stunning. Amazing. Um, but I, you know, before we get into all the 2018 stuff, because we got some more to talk about there. We've got I kinda, a lot of chairs here. We've got a lot of chairs here. So <laughs> I wanted to revisit what I think is 2017's biggest game. So please welcome Herman Holst from Guerrilla Games. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Herman Holst. I'm wearing a toll neck tonight. <laughs> hey, Sean. Hey, Herman. Can I sit? Wow, we have a lot of family. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Big we family. Do yeah, yeah. We love family. How are you guys? <laughs> Herman, you're looking rested. You know, taking my time. I'm yeah? Here, I'm here on vacation for 40 hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, from my perspective, 2017 has kind of been the year of Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, it's clearly a humongous hit. I mean, people have fallen in love with this. It's a tremendously great looking game on PlayStation 4 Pro or on standard PlayStation 4. Uh, nominations out the wazoo. And you guys just shipped the Frozen Wilds, too. I mean, that's, a, that's one hell of a year. It's been a fantastic year. I mean, we, we worked on this game for seven years, and then when, it, when you finally get, get it in, in the hands of, actually, of you guys, and we, we hear about it, and we see people being so active, it, it's just heartwarming for us. Yeah, and, and then you got the Frozen Wilds, which you just put out, too. I mean, that's a whole bunch of new content. I, I, it's, it's unusual to see an expansion, I think, of that size come out the same year as a title as big as Horizon Zero Dawn. And you know what? We actually just started working on it the week after we shipped. Oh, yeah? Uh, so it, there was no preparation. There was no time for that at all. <laughs> so it was a, a good chunk of content that we made in, what, eight, nine months. So it's been a busy year. Impressive. So, uh, you know, given the fact the game is a huge hit, what, what sort of surprised you most uh, in terms of the fan reaction? Wow, there, there's been so many surprises on this, on this project. Um, I, I would say the, uh, just, just the feedback from the audience. I mean, we, we've had such amazing responses. Uh, we got this, actually this is a mail that Sean forwarded on to me from, uh, from a president of one of the game studios. He had four daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just sent this note that his daughters, uh, young girls, they rearranged the furniture in their home <laughs> uh, so that they could practice like Aloy because it was a character that for the first time actually looked like them. And it's these kind of responses, or it's the, the cosplayers that so many of them, they, uh, they've come out to the studio, they've kind of become super fans, they invest so much in them. Or the sheer amount of time that people spend in the game. Uh, photo mode, some people have spent weeks and weeks just uh, not taking snaps, because it actually borders pretty much professional photography. It's incredible, yeah. Uh, so it, it's actually the, the, the extent of, of that kind of feedback that's been the most surprising to me. Well, and it's great to have such a strong female protagonist that has been, you know, loved by the entire PlayStation community. We've just created a whole new, a whole new icon for our, for our industry. Beautiful game. One of my absolute favorites this year. Now, okay, from my selfish perspective, one of the reasons I'm so pleased to see Horizon be such a huge hit is because, well, it's a single-player game. Ah. And I love single-player games. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, I think it's fair to say, it's sort of, it seems like people still want them. What do you think? Oh. <laughs> I have answered that question. <laughs> I think they're dead, man. They're, no, you know, the strange thing is it's by far our best-selling game, and it's the first solely single-player game that we've made in a long time. I don't really get the debate that much. To me, when you're uh, somebody like myself, sometimes you're after this kind of magical, uh, unbroken narrative experience and there is no other way really than having that that single player experience so there, there will always be a, a market for that it, it's hugely important especially in a world as unique and e exotic and interesting as horizon zero mm. dawn with the character as interesting and, and unique as aloy 
So you don't want to be interrupted. You want to be in that magic spell yeah. and stay there. And and that's why sometimes a, a single player game can be the, the best option. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Herman, you're going to stay with us here tonight, and we're going to have some other folks dropping in. Thank you so much, Herman. Uh, Horizon is not the only narrative-based single-player game PlayStation's focused on right now. Anyone interested in a small, handcrafted artisan franchise by the name of God of War? <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, in that case... How about we welcome Corey Barlog? He's a creative director at Santa Monica Studio. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Corey Barlog. Great to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to be here. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to cut to the chase on this one. Huh. Can we get a little bit of a status check on God of War? How's that Ooh. one coming along? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jesus, Sid, no kind of run up in No, no, no. <laughs> no foreplay, just right to it. <laughs> right Fantastic. It's going really good. Uh, uh, we are in a, a final phases right now, doing a lot of play testing. He's very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited, very excited. Uh, but it is, you know, it's a, it's a big game. <laughs> I, I can't hear you louder. <laughs> Freebird, is that what? Yeah, <laughs> Freebird. You feeling confident, Corey? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it, we, I'm feeling very good about things. Uh, I would love to be able to tell people when we're going to release it, but my, my dog ate the release date, so I don't have that right now. <laughs> okay. uh, but I can tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, right now, we are in the playtesting phases. In fact, this week we just finished up a uh, playtest. And over the last like four or five playtests, we've been clocking in, I think, the total gameplay time is somewhere in the arena of 25 to 35 hours. Wow. So. Huge game. That's, that's big. I that's mean, uh, I got It's not as big as his game, but I'm, you know, getting there. It's close. Yeah. It's, it's getting there. I mean, I got to say, I was assuming it was in the maybe 10, 15, 20 hours. So. Yeah, that's what I was telling people. Yeah. Uh, and then we sort of accidentally made it a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot bigger. Oops. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's twice as big as we expected. That's funny. Yeah. So, um, Sean, you know, a question I've been, I've been wondering about, Corey obviously has a, a very unique vision here for God of War. Mm -hmm. It is quite a shift from what we've seen from the last uh, six, six games, I think it is, in the series. Right. So what was it about Corey's pitch and his vision that sold worldwide studios on this new God of War? A bribe. Well, he said he'd ship in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corey has so much expertise and knowledge and, and special secret skills, as if he might have sat in some library at some university and reading all the forbidden, you know, Norse mythology books they have in the back room. Um, this is totally true. <laughs> and so when he took me through his vision for the game and really taking it to a new place, not only by, you know, by the camera angle, but the type of story we're telling, a more, a more narrative-driven and not, not so, um, like, brawler-driven kind of game, I thought this is exactly the place where we need to take something like the God of War franchise. It, it keeps it true to its roots, yet makes it new all over again for a new audience. And that's what Corey sold me on. It took him about 90 minutes to tell you. I just told you in four minutes. But um, <laughs> it was exactly what... I'm a bit loquacious like that. <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, this is the guy who's already shipped his game, and this is the guy who's in right. crunch. <laughs> he is way more relaxed. Compare right? and contrast. <laughs> what, what are you still doing here, man? You've got to be... What's, what's the bug count? <laughs> right. I'm getting texted right now the bug count. So, so, Corey, the game is at least bigger than I expected, I can say that, based me on what too. you've been telling me. It's large. <laughs> it's large. So, but in a big world like that, how do you sort of keep a narrative focus? Like, how do you stay on track with the player? Ooh, very, very, very carefully. Uh, I mean, playtesting, honestly, has really helped us a lot to figure out how we keep the player focused. And one of the original things I was talking to people about was treating the game like a, a tour bus 
So that you're in this massive world and we're sort of rewarding the player for being curious and you can kind of pull the string to get off the tour bus, which the tour bus is the narrative in this story. Uh, and you can kind of go look around, check out the world, but the, the bus is always a few steps away no matter what you do. So it's kind of a fun exploration of the world. The tour bus. The tour bus. I think right? we use the analogy of, of a theme park just around the corner here, Disneyland, for making a rise of zero dawn. Oh. For, the, for a tour bus. And that really was like a theme park. Too. It's a theme park. It's amazing. So, uh, Corey, since we got you here, I wanted to run through the latest gameplay footage, actually, that we saw at Paris uh, from yeah, God of yeah, War. Yeah, yeah. But because we got you here, you can add some context and some information that we maybe didn't have back then. Oh, good. So let's go ahead. <laughs> let's go ahead and roll that. So go ahead and roll that. I'm going to say something right away. Uh, I was talking about playtesting. We were still building the system for the kids' ability to talk in-game, the banter system, we call it. So Atreus, in the game, wasn't fully talking a lot. So when we made this video, I was dropping the audio in uh, without us having playtested it. So I treat this video a little bit like it was a giant playtest with the world. So we sort of discovered, as we sent it out, in a playtest that was happening almost the same time this was coming out, that we were like, oh, man, he talks too much. We need to, to chill that out a little bit. So it was kind of a fantastic realization. This right here is just was meant to give you a little bit of a glimpse into sort of the moment-to-moment -moment combat. Uh, previous ones, we had focused a little bit on the story and the tone and the world, and this is kind of giving you that sense that we haven't really lost that pick-up-and-play aspect of God of War, uh, and all the encounters were really going to allow the player to really open up and use uh, their own creativity uh, in each of the experiences, using the environment, using other characters against each other. It's uh, very fun. And this is really just a, a, a area you find in the game when you're around exploring. So this is not even... The, the sort of main critical path. Oh, right. that's interesting. So it's, it's kind of honeycombed with secrets and extra Honeycomb, that's nice. I'm you like that? that? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Put that in the marketing book. It is absolutely <laughs> honeycombed. <laughs> so, what do you think it is? Now, I, I remember there being something here at the end of this. Oh, yeah. Well, because it was Halloween, right? You just got to share, scare mm -hmm. the sure. people. A anything you can share about uh, that particular ghoul? Uh, that's the Revenant, okay. uh, one of the characters that we've introduced in the, the, the Lost Pages. And uh, those are characters that are practitioners of Sather magic, and they've been doing it for so long, they've kind of lost their, their, their humanity and their sort of human form, if you will, possessed right. by the drug of magic. The drug of magic, right. all right. And it's a honeycomb, right? <laughs> <laughs> So we have tour buses, we have honeycomb. Right. That's right. Theme park. I'm so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's been uh, six games. This will actually be the seventh game, I believe, in the God of War series. I, I think it's actually, if you can include the mobile. I was like wondering eight, if, yeah. Right? So let, God of War Betrayal, it. man. It's all about that. That's right. So how do you keep up with fan expectations? I mean, there's a, there's a big history with this title. There really is. Uh, uh, very tirelessly, uh, we are constantly getting feedback from our playtesters, uh, paying attention to what people are seeing when we are showing stuff. Uh, this is a labor of love for everybody at Santa Monica. So a lot of people have worked on this franchise from the beginning. We care a tremendous amount about this game. So we hope that you all do as well. <laughs> Herman, I mean, you guys shipped this year. Do you have any advice? You keep going back to these. I, I know, <laughs> I know. I'm trying to help you. Right. I'm trying to help you. Right, Herman, you guys shipped. So you've been where he, he, where Corey is right now. Do you have any words of wisdom? Any advice? Lots of coffee. Right. <laughs> no, so the, the Corey's now in a, in a place where your peak productivity every hour counts. I really don't know what he's doing here right now. He should be back in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it, it's also the most interesting phase in the project where everything kind of falls into place and... I know, because we're pretty close to uh, Guerrilla Games and, and Santa Monica Studio. We actually visit each other. We do an exchange program. We have a lot of people that have been on site of this team. Um, and I know that these guys are in a situation now where everything is falling into place. So it's going to be magical. I can't wait to visit soon. Yes. I want to visit you guys, too. I never have gotten a chance. Everybody else goes the out there. The is open. Right. You're All right. Busy. Finish the game. Totally going out there. We should crowdfund that. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, I we say this before he needs to go finish I the game? Think you, speak, you, say that? you speak for a lot of people here, I think we can say that. <laughs> right, we'll just delay the game. I'll go out there. <laughs> Corey, I don't know if you got a chance to check out the God of War booth that's actually being built right this minute here uh, on PlayStation. Academy. I have not seen it live in person. I've seen photos and then okay, heard about it over the phone. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. 
So you'll be able to, uh, there's a lot of great photo ops. You'll be able to kind of wear the Kratos face paint, be able to don the armor, take photos. But there's a special reward for those who are brave enough to get their head shaven. Yeah. Any, any takers out there? Who's, who's daring enough? Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well. Okay, we're going to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I, I, I love Corey, thank you so much. Uh, thank we're going to have some other guests dropping by here. On that note, it sounds like some folks here watched the Game Awards last night, right? Okay. We got an awesome new look at Dreams, and I thought it might be fun to learn a little bit more about it. What do you think? All right, well, uh, please welcome Shaban Reddy from Media Molecule. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Siobhan Reddy. This is the more relaxing seat. This is so relaxing. It is, it's lovely. It's <laughs> I feel nice. separate. Well, we could just I go. Feel, <laughs> I feel apart. This is the stress seat. Go ahead. Okay, I'll take it on. <laughs> All right. Siobhan, I got to ask, I mean, what's Media Molecule been up to lately? Well, we have just been so busy. Um, heads down, get it, getting dreams ready for everybody. So we're so excited to be here at PSX and sharing the project. Um, you know, for us, like we're a studio that loves to, you know, bring new experiences and innovative new experiences to everybody and can't wait to see what you're going to do with it. How would you describe Dreams? I mean, it seems like a game that's kind of hard to describe, if I'm frank. Well, I mean, um, so we did make Little Big Planet, and for us, Dreams is our next step into the Play, Create, Share domain. And, um, I mean, in the trailer that we released last night, like, the, the really important thing about that, that announced our story mode and sort of showed what the, the story is that we're making. Um, but also the really important thing about that is that everything was made in dreams. So, you know, create this time is that you can create absolutely anything. You can create games, you can create me movies, like all of the characters, the animation, the logic, everything, everything was made in dreams. Um, and so for us, that's what's, you know, what's, what's a really big differentiator. And, um, and then you can share it with the world. So really it is like that next step on with the uh, Play, Create, Share. Tell us a little bit more about what we're seeing here in the story mode. I mean, I think there was sort of like three different dreams or universes that That's we were right, kind of yeah. looking at. That's right, yeah. That's cool. So here you have little debug. So basically our story mode is um, three interwoven stories. And uh, it's called Art's Dream. And here you're seeing debug. This is the sort of more sci-fi theme. And we decided that instead of just sort of going with one type of gameplay, one type of look, we would do the three. So this is a sci-fi. Um, and we also have the sort of film noir setting, uh, which is point and click adventure. And there is the childhood fantasy, which is kind of classic MM with a bit of horror stuck in. Yeah, and I think we're um, seeing this uh, on here, right here now. Yep. Yep. Looks lovely. I mean, Inter so interesting to me, you could build something like this. I mean, oh, they well, look so different. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's sort of the point, because we want to show people the breadth of what can be done with the tools. And, you know, this theme here, the mystery theme, is just it's absolutely gorgeous. The whole theme is just drop-dead stunning. Um, and for us, like, it was really important sort of to bring in these, you know, painterly looks and sort of the chiseled characters. Um, here we have a map, and so this is sort of how you, the dream is laid out. Um, and so you'll see that like, as you play through it, this is we're beginning here now into Art's dream. So yeah, Art here is the main character, um, and this is again in the noir setting. Um, but yeah, for us it was the idea of like taking these three different settings and sort of binding them together into an interwoven narrative for people and to experience. Not to belabor the point, but you've made all of this in the Dreams engine. That's right. All of it is running real time in Dreams. Right. All made in Dreams, running real time. And the time. tools are there that someone could recreate that. That's right, yep, yep. On their own. Yep, they're all there. Wow. I mean, what yep, I mean, that's the exciting thing. Yeah, I, I've just always been wondering with this title, I mean, how far sort of does the rabbit hole go when it comes to genres? I mean, <laughs> I mean, can you make, like, racing games? Can yeah. you make RPGs? Yep. Can you make 
I mean, and it, I mean, I think what we learned from LVP is give people the tools, and that we have. We, we, we saw the most extraordinary things, and dreams is just it's so it's just so much deeper than LVP. So I mean, for us, like we, we you know, we're so excited because there's absolutely the sky is the limit, um, and I think we'll actually start to see almost like a bit of genre bending, you know, different genres coming together, and that's going to be super exciting. No, no, it strikes me, Corey. I mean. You know, would there be any benefit to God of War maybe borrowing some of this Dreams technology? And would that help you get across the finish line a little Probably. quicker? <laughs> I would have had a release date today had I had... <laughs> Speaking of that, actually, Shaban, uh, do, we have, do we have a target release time here for Dreams? So we're releasing 2018. Great. Yeah, so we're, we're ready, getting ready, yep. I would imagine you need some kind of beta or something to, to really launch a game like this. That's right, yeah. So we're going to do a beta pre, um, prior to launch, but um, yeah, we're not announcing the exact dates just yet, but yeah, that will definitely happen. And we know that our community are desperate to get, to get it onto the beta, so we'll be definitely doing that. And, and so are your sister studios within the world. I know, well, you know, Anxious come on over, come on over. We'll do yeah. I'm we sure get, you we get a do. copy early, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, we'd love to do the jam, Worldwide Studios Jam. Like, there how cool know. would that be? I like that. Awesome. I'm, in. I'm in. Let's yeah. do it. I mean, we're going to do jamming. it. Like, I just think it would be the best. I'll cover the pizza for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Shabon. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of talking here tonight. I, I kind of feel like playing a game, you know? I mean, what do you guys think? You want to play a game? Play something. Play a game with us? Okay. Any of you guys have any ideas about a fun game to play with friends? Yahtzee. Yahtzee? Yes. Yeah. We're going to just Yahtzee? sit down and play Yahtzee right here on the stage. <laughs> I've got an idea. Yeah. I've got an idea. That's <laughs> overcooked. Overcooked is a brilliant game. No, <laughs> we're not going to play Overcooked up here. We're going to play... We've done Until Dawn before in the group setting. Yes. We're going to play Detroit Become Human. <laughs> Please welcome Guillaume from Quantic Dream. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Guillaume de Fondemier. A lot of people. A lot of people here, yeah. This is going to be exciting. Uh, we got the idea from this from the very first PlayStation experience, by the way, where we fired up Until Dawn, great game. I'm sure you guys are fans Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. And had everyone cheer and hoot and holler to decide, uh, to decide what actions we should take. But before we do that, we'll do that in just a minute. Guillaume, I wanted to ask, what inspired uh, Detroit Become Human? Well, as you know, you know, in, in 2011, we started to work on a tech demo called Kara. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, this Android that is getting <laughs> built. And uh, um, when it released in 2012, we showed it as a prototype. Everyone was asking us, you know, what happens to Kara when she goes out into the world? And uh, so David Cage and the team started to work on, you know, what happens when she comes out. And so we imagined this world in about 20 years um, when uh, human-like androids are really commonplace. So they're everywhere. Um, they've taken on actually most jobs of humans. Um, and although they look and speak and behave like human beings, they're only machines. They're really at the service of humans. And so in the game, you're going to play as three of these androids. Uh, Kara, of course, uh, <laughs> Connor, and Marcus, and uh, they're each very different models. Um, they have uh, their own backstory. They have um, um, their own place in society. And as the player, you will have to make critical decisions that is going to impact their fate. So you're really going to be in control of the story. Mm and change the way the story unfolds. I love games like this. I love games like this. And the great news is this is playable here this weekend at PlayStation Experience. But I don't want to wait. Why wait, right? I, I, I want it all. I want to open my presents right now. So Guillaume, 
Take your position, please. Guillaume will be playing on PS4 Pro. And here's what's gonna happen is all you early bird ticket holders out there, you're gonna help Guillaume make decisions in this game. And you're gonna do that by making noise, right? I don't hear you well, so please. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of context, we're playing this hostage scene, which is the very first scene in the game. We're playing as Connor. Connor is a prototype. Uh, he's been built to investigate deviant androids, androids that all of a sudden do something weird. And so we're going into this hostage scene where the house um, android um, has taken a little girl hostage. And we're going to try and save the girl. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> X for Sean, no? <laughs> Okay, now I'm in control of the character. I can really move him around the way I want with the uh, left analog stick. With the right analog stick, I can interact. <laughs> so Connor is very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I save the fish or not? Oh, too late, too late. There's no sound. All right, ma'am. You, you need to go. You can't okay. do that. You, why aren't you sending a real person? Remember that every action has, has a consequence. So at any moment you can hold R2 and you enter what we call the mind palace of the character, shows you your objectives. So here, for instance, I can see that I can talk to Captain Allen. Captain Allen, my name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. It's firing and everything that moves. It already shot down two of my men. We could easily get it, but they're on the edge of the balcony. If it falls, she falls. Quick, so I can ask him about the deviant's name, emotional shock. Has it experienced an emotional shock recently? I haven't got a clue. Does it matter? I need information to determine the best approach. Have you tried its deactivation codes? The first thing we tried. Listen, <laughs> saving that kid is all that matters. So either you deal with this fucking android now, or I'll take care of it. Okay. Don't know if we said the right thing here, but... <laughs> okay, um, so as Connor the Investigator, I have special abilities. One of his abilities of Connor is that he can analyze uh, evidence. And if you find all the evidence, you can then put them together. And you enter into the reconstruct mode. So you can basically reconstruct what has happened in a, in a recent past. So here, for instance, you can see that someone has taken this wallet here. So the deviant took the father's son.
Okay, so we have unlocked something here, apparently, that we may use later in the game. So I'm going to further investigate this apartment, which is actually fairly large. So here, oh, sorry, up. <laughs> Oops. So there's, there's really nothing you have to do. Is there a bug here? Okay, now we know the deacon's name is Daniel. Maybe something that we can use later on. Way up. Good. So at any moment, I can press R2 here and see, you know, those little yellow flags. That's an indication of everything that's interactive in the scene. So let's take a look at this person here. I have a bad controller that we know now. Okay, and now I can reconstruct and try to understand what happened with him. It's really part of the gameplay to also play with the camera. Try to find clues. This, this is kind of creepy, Guillaume. Okay, we found something. I've unlocked the new evidence that I'll be able to analyze. Now we understand probably what happened. Deviant was going to be replaced. Didn't like it. Oops. All right, so that is a soft reminder that time is of the essence. Here again, I can reconstruct the events, try to understand what happened. I can turn the camera. And now I found a weapon. Should I take the weapon? <laughs> okay, so now I have a 78% probability of success. 
try. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, now we need to be quick. Don't come any closer or I'll jump. Unlocked. Quick. I know you and Emma were very close. You think she betrayed you, but she's done nothing wrong. She lied to me. That's good. I thought she loved me. But I was wrong. She's just like all the other humans. What should I do? Quick. Should I do it quick? Listen, I know it's not your fault. These emotions you're feeling are just errors in your software. No, it's not my fault. I never wanted this. I love them, you know? But I was nothing to them. Just a slave to be ordered around. What should I do? Say that.
You guys should be very proud you saved the fish. Really <laughs> Gotta save that fish. That was incredibly tense. And I'll tell you, I played that two or three different times. I didn't even know you could do that. I, I, I would always talk them out of it, or I mean, I, I, how many ways are there to solve uh, that situation? There, there, there are many ways, and, but m more than the different endings, and that's true for this scene, but for all the other scenes, um, everything that you do has a consequence. And so you have to experience it for yourself because watching someone play and playing it yourself is, is really totally different. But uh, we, we're really trying to give players the possibility to uh, make decisive decisions, decisions that are going to impact each of the characters' fate and totally change the story. And, and it's, it's really our most ambitious project. Um, it's the most branching narrative that we've ever created. Um, and it's also the most um, incredible game that we've created because we are touching about, uh, upon certain themes that are you know, socially relevant. Um, and we hope, we think that we're going to um, touch players on an emotional level and give them the opportunity to experience something really, really different. Well, you touched me on an emotional level, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> what about you guys down there? <laughs> touched. Yep, touched. <laughs> wow. Intense. How many pages is the script? I need to know. Um, so David Cage says 2,000. Um, <laughs> I, I counted oh. them, it's slightly more. Yeah, slightly more. There's a lot more, probably. Yeah. Well, we, we, we are... Um, <clears throat> at the end of the development, obviously. And, um, yeah, we have thousands of story permutations Ugh. that we're going through. It's, uh, it's hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, you have been working on this for seven years, and you said you were working on yours for... How long were you working on yours? Pretty much, yeah. Seven? 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 I mean, Seriously, I'm five number. years... Less than five years. <laughs> Everyone... Uh, We'll be I, thinking I about the game. Years, We're too. thinking about the game for three years, then we start developing. Oh, uh, there you go. So ten. But it's it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just trying to top me. That's cool. Yeah. Finish the game, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I don't want to. Finish now I want to take an additional two to three years. Do do I have more time? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> two years is fine. Yeah. Great job, everybody. You saved the hostage. That was Detroit and Become Human. Play it this weekend. And you saved the fish. Get a totally different experience. Who knows? That is coming out next year, right? Next year on PS4? It is coming out next year in spring. I am buying that. Ooh. Oh, oh my. Oh, Guillaume, you just laid it right out there. Ex exclusive. Okay. Uh, okay, well, very cool, very cool. Good stuff so far. But I got to say, it, who wants to see some trailers? You want to see some new game trailers? <laughs> All right. Let, let's see some new game trailers. Roll, roll it. So what is this? Like, hole simulator? It's kind of cool. You put trash in the hole and it gets bigger. You know what would be cool? If it actually ran at 60 frames per second. Dude, it does. Look at the screen. Does it have a platinum trophy? I don't know. I just started. So like, what's the point of the game? There's puzzles. If you collect the kiln, the hole catches on fire. Oh, sick. This game has updog, right? What's updog? <laughs> What's updog? Seriously, what's up, dog?
けこれも可能性かよなら全員ぶっ飛ばすだけだThe Elder Crossing is upon us again. Hmm. Quite a sight. Just wait till we're finished. Soon, I hope. Ah, the second fleet always delivers. It's up to you to stop it. This whole operation rides on how well we do that. We can do this. It's an ecological marvel. One that easily dwarfs any I have ever seen.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andrew House and Mark Cerny. A lot of people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, uh, Andy, you've been at the heart of PlayStation for over 20 years now, and you've been planning a change for the last few months. Is there uh, a little you can tell everyone about that? I, sure. Um, you know, in essence, uh, I have uh, been with PlayStation since the start, and I've been through some good times. and some not so good times. And I think right now the business is probably in the best shape, our platform, our games, uh, than I've ever seen it. And thank you. I hope, I hope you guys agree. <laughs> and with that, and having finally achieved the creation of Sony Interactive Entertainment, bringing all of our uh, company together under one roof, uh, and then, on top of that, having you know, been with the same company for 27 years, uh, 14 of those years working in Japan, um, it just felt like the right time uh, to hand uh, a great thing to the next generation and for me to just go and find one more adventure. So, yeah, the tribute at the Game Awards last night was, uh, was definitely very emotional. Yeah. And um, so tonight we have a special guest who also wants to celebrate your impact on gaming. But uh, before that, let's roll video. Once there was an explosion. A bang which gave birth to time and space. Once there was an explosion. A bang which set a planet spinning in that space. Once there was an explosion. A bang which gave rise to life as we know it. And then came the next explosion.
was an explosion. A bang which gave rise to life as we know it. And then came the next explosion. An explosion that will be our last. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Hideo Kojima. So uh, that trailer is a little strange, but the strangest thing is that after you played the game for four or five hours, all of that starts to make sense. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Andy, I know you and Kojima-san have uh, a long history together. How did you meet? Uh, we met under the worst of all possible circumstances. Uh, it was E3, I was responsible for running the show, and I was hosting an event, and I got a call on my cell phone saying, uh, Kojima-san's code has just been stolen by a fan from the booth, and you have to go tell him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, when out into the night, we had tracked him down to a restaurant, and uh, we called him outside, and uh, on the sidewalk in LA told him that his precious code had been stolen, and we had no idea where it was. Uh, and I remember the looks on people's faces as, as uh, some guy was, short guy was bowing deeply uh, on the sidewalk in LA to apologize for, for what had just happened. Anyway, the relationship could only go in one direction from there, which is obviously <laughs> up, so I'm pleased to say. Ne? Gohan <laughs> <laughs> あの、テラスみたいなところで食べてて、あ、まあ、平井さんも見ましたけど、アンジーさんがなぜかこう近づいてきて、こうご飯を食べてたんですよ。Yeah, we were eating together.聞かされて、アンジーさんがずっと謝ってたんで。We were eating a terrace and for no reason, for no apparent reason, Andy comes out of nowhere and approaches and then he tells the news and he starts to apologize deeply. I remember that. And uh, Kojima-san's face just went white as a sheet. <laughs> I've never felt so bad in my life. でも、あの、忘れられないですよね。あの、その前からアンディさんとは、あの、結構会議とかえ、会ってましたけど、まあ、あの時が、まあ、こう、なんていうんですかね、こう、すごく近くに感じた時です。そうです。It's hard to forget that. I mean, before that I've been with Andy meetings and whatnot, but that was the first time that I really remember, you know, get closing the distance with Andy. So, uh Death Stranding. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how that came together? So you just saw the trailer that is all working in real time in a PlayStation 4 Pro. And also in the latter half of the trailer, you see Norman in some in like water, kind of swimming, going to his own body. That's playable. Oh. Wow. wow. So how did Death Stranding come together? <laughs> <laughs> We can skip that. So, um, <laughs> maybe the world knows. So, what are your, some of your favorite memories together? Uh, 
あのー、まあ食事を一緒によくしてます。ずっと前から。We, we often go and grab lunch or dinner together. であの大体仕事の話は我々しませんので。And we barely ever talk about work. 大体70年代、80年代のテレビドラマ、これは主にアメリカ、ヨーロッパとか、そういうのをすごく。We mainly talk about 70s、80s TV shows, mainly American or European TV shows. Okay, so, so Kojima san is being very modest here because he will take on pop culture trivia. In the US and Japan, 70s, 80s, and he will kick your ass. <laughs> He's just an encyclopedia.、Uh, I, I would also add that I think the most fun time most recently、uh, was sort of building a different form of relationship、uh, and seeing at first hand the sort of rebirth of Kojima Productions. Uh, and having Sony be part of that has just been just,、uh, really, really phenomenal from my point of view. I was able to do it in the same way. I was able to do it in the same way. I was able to do it in the same way. I was able to do it in the same way. I was able to do it in まあ、いろんなところがあったんですけどもやっぱり自由にものづくりがしたいので僕のことを理解してくれているところとやりたいなというのはずっとありました。So I had this many offers but I wanted to keep my freedom to create exactly what I wanted so I wanted to work with someone that understood me. でアンディさんにお会いしてこんなものを作りたいんだよとっていう相談をしました。And well I met with Andy and I told him you know this is kind of what I want to do. 普通はえー、役員室で何十人もいるところでピッチというのを散々やるわけですよ。こういうものをこういう狙いでこんだけ売り上げがあってこんだけで作りますっていうのをしないといけないんですけども。So normally what you would do after this point is you go into executive meetings and you do a pitch of this is kind of the expected revenue, this is exactly what I'm planning and what kind of target audience I have. That's what would normally happen. でその時アンディさんに23分内容を口頭で言っただけなのに OK! っていうので。So I remember at that point I just told Andy maybe two, three minutes about what I wanted to do and just told him I didn't have any document and he just said, yeah, OK! <笑>で、あの、最初の作品なんでやっぱりアンディさん、あのね、だいぶ付き合いも長いですし、ねえー、信頼関係もあるのでそれであの今回のデストランディングができたと。アンディさんがいなければこれはなかった。生まれなかったものです。これもこの赤ちゃんも生まれなかった。<笑> and it would be my, the first work of the of Kojima Productions in the independent, so it was very important for me. And well, it was all because of Andy. Without Andy, none of this would have been possible. None of this, what you saw, would have been created. None of the baby giving the thumbs up would have been possible. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe a, a shout out to、uh, Herman and Gorilla Games for、uh, Decima.、Yeah. Uh, he's in order. Uh, that was really it for questions. Any final thoughts? <laughs>、oh, we've, we've run, I know. It's, we needed more cards. <laughs> I think we throw it to the end. Throw it to the end. Yes, so so. And Andy is going to be able to do this together. えー、去年の1月ですかね。えーはい、so after, well, going lunch,、uh, lunch with Andy last year, I think it was in January. で企画は考えてたんですけども、テクノロジーが全くないので、エンジンもツールもないので、まあその時は事務所もなかったです。<笑> I already had a good idea of what I wanted to do, but I didn't have the technology with me. I didn't have, you know, I didn't even have an office at that time. でその時まあ友達のマークさんを思い出して、マークさんに相談しました。So、also thought of Mark and discussed with Mark. でマークさんと1月世界中のスタジオを回ってそこでヘルマンさんと出会って今のデシマエンジンがあると。で、まあ、ヘルマンさんと
これもよくいろんなところで喋ってますけどもいろんなスタジオを回ってプレゼンテーションを受けましたエンジンはこうだよとかツールはこうですよとかっていうのを受けました僕らもう何もなかったんであのその時4人ぐらいで仮事務所だったんですけどもすごく皆さん優しくしていただきまして we we really, really でゲリラの皆さんはプレゼンテーション終わってで帰ろうとした時に一つの箱をくれたんですね And well,、uh, Gorilla made their, made their presentation showing us their engine, and when we were about to leave, they just gave us a small wooden box. And well, when we opened the box, there was the whole source code of Gorilla's engine. とにかく小島さんこれ,これ持って帰ってくれと言われて、もうそこでもうは泣きそうになって、もうこことしかこことあのゲームを作りたいってその時思いました。マークさんも同席されてたと思いますけど、はい。It should be noted that at this point we had no contract, nothing, no, no bounds, and they were just like, yeah, go ahead, please use our engine. This almost brought me down to tears, and I, at that point I made a decision. Okay, this is the people I want to work with. This is also in part thanks to Mark. あのデスストランディングっていうゲームのまあテーマはまあつながりなんですよね、ストランドというか。で、最初にアンディさんとソニーさんとのつながりがあって、マークさんとのつながりがあって、ヘルマンさんのつながりがあって、皆さんとのつながりがあって、今ここにデストランディングが。紹介できるっていうのは非常に嬉しく思います。あ,のありがとうございます。It started with a connection with me and Andy that led to a connection with Mark and that led to a connection with Herman and Guerrilla Games and that led to a connection, a connection with all the people in here and that all, the, all those connections led to the, having this running here today. So I want to thank, thank everyone for this. Thank you, gentlemen. Fun night, huh? You know, just get some old friends together, you know, just hang out, you know. Getting to be holiday times. I love spending time with friends and family, you know. And,、uh, I, I count a lot of you among, among that. I mean, it's, seriously, it's like, it's like a game development super group is stacked up on here. Just what, one huge name after another. Thank you so much for, for all、we、of you. We can start a musical act together. This would be wonderful, I think. <laughs> it, it would be incredible. <laughs> what kind of game would we make if we made a game together? That's what I want to know. We would make Death Stranding in Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> And it would ship in 2018. And I still would not understand it. <laughs> Atari's on fire today. That there would be a story. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed, there'd be a great story. That you'll understand at the very end. <laughs> it would come in under budget. And,、uh, well, under budget. <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm and sure. early, like all those things, all、yes. the things that happen. That seriously is in your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, PlayStation Experience is just such a special time, and we have an incredible weekend lined up for everybody here. We've got all those big panels I was talking about earlier Naughty Dog's bringing it, Sucker Punch is bringing it, Media Molecule's bringing it, and of course, tons and tons and tons of playable PS4 and PSVR titles. Lots of stuff to play. I mean, Far Cry 5 is at the top of my list. You're going to be able to play Firewall Zero Hour. That's the new PlayStation VR game we announced earlier. Shadow of the Colossus, seriously, it's the third time I've said it, I know. Absolutely gorgeous. It's going to make your eyes pop out of your head. And then don't forget, we've got Capcom Cup on yes, Sunday、Capcom、as well.、Cup. That's going to be a lot of fun, too. That's going to be right here. I truly think it is our biggest PlayStation experience yet, and I hope you all agree when you get out there on the show floor tomorrow. Before we wrap up, though, Sean, there's been something I've been meaning to mention to you. Way down here, all by myself on the stage. Way down there. That's right. That's right. There, there's this,、uh, this thing with this shirt. You know, I see it kind of peeking out there out of your. What, what's the deal with that? Can we get a look? So, so we kind of, it, it's this kind of tradition sort of happened by accident. 
<laughs> and that I would wear a shirt on stage at PSX, which would give an indication of kind of games to come in the future, things I want to see happen. Uh, there was the infamous Crash Bandicoot t-shirt experience. But, but it led our friends and partners at Activision to bring out Crash Bandicoot again, which is one of the biggest, uh, one of our most successful titles uh, this year. Uh, we've done that with Ratchet. Um, we've done that with Wipeout, and now we have Wipeout VR coming. Bib ribbon. Uh, yep. And so this, your shirt. Yeah. yeah, what is that? Yeah, I don't oh, exactly yeah. recognize it. Maybe. C can you tell us anything about this? Maybe. Can you tell us? What, what, what is that? Anyone it know says, what that is? It says Sir Dan. <laughs> so I've been, I've been getting a lot, of, um, a, a lot of feedback about the title of Medieval. It's a really important title in my, in my personal journey, in my, in my career. Uh, we worked on that uh, when I moved to London. Um, we would like to bring it back uh, on PlayStation 4. Uh, we think Sir Daniel needs one more resurrection, and this is the time to do it. Um, thank everyone for sending their suggestions to me. Serendipitously, I'd already had this one baking in the oven, and then I saw all the pressure coming in, so I thought this was a great time to bring it out and to talk about it. Should we roll the video? You guys want to see a video? <laughs> Let's do that. Well, 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 he's back. Finally, you can prove yourself as a warrior. Greetings, stranger. I'm dead. Medieval's coming to PS4. That's awesome. One more thing. Um, this shirt will also be available in the PS Store uh, for the next two days at PlayStation Experience. And uh, all proceeds from the sale of the Sir Daniel uh, Resurrection shirt will go to Able Gamers. Yeah. So, uh, please, everybody, grab one of these shirts over the next two days. Fantastic stuff. So, uh, hey, I want to thank all of our panelists. Thanks to all of you. It's been an honor. This is an incredible bunch. You guys have been great. We have an incredible weekend planned for all of you. Coming up next is Greg Miller with Kinda Funny. We're gonna take a very short intermission, but we're just getting started, so stay with us. Be sure to stick around.
Rated RP to M. So, Gary, we're looking for someone who's cool under pressure. A quick thinker. Someone who won't back down from a big challenge. Does that sound like you, Gary? Uh, yeah. PlayStation, the best place to play. PlayStation. Rated R. There's a reason you're here. It's in your blood. The primal need to pitch yourself. There's a reason you're here. It's in your blood. The primal need to pitch yourself. Against the unknown. And to do so, dear shopper, requires a very fine of wares. Best get to it. Rated RP to him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Greg Miller. Hello, PSX, how are you? What's up, everybody? Are you having a good time? You've been sitting a long time. Everybody get up. Let's do some of this, a little bit of this. I'm looking right at you. I'm not, sir, you. Right, yes, there, thank, thank you, that's all I needed. Uh, my name's Greg Miller, I work for a website called kindoffunny.com. But I think on the occasion, I'm feeling a bit nostalgic. Beyond! Yeah! My kind of people. This is PSX, this is my favorite show of the year. This, of course, the fourth PSX, the fourth one I've been at, and the fourth one I've been lucky enough to be at and have a panel. Now, usually... I come here and I do a podcast. I've done Podcast Beyond. I've done the Kind of Funny Games cast. I've done PS I Love You XOXO. And this year I thought maybe I would do Kind of Funny Games Daily. Maybe we'd do the Games cast instead. But it finally dawned on me. I emailed PlayStation. I said, hey, could I get Sean or Shu, sit them down and do an interview with them? I'd love to do that. And I expected them to say no. Instead, they hit me up and said, would you like to do it, both of them, on the kickoff night? And I said, Okay, sure, that sounds like a great idea. So we have 15 minutes to talk to these gentlemen about their careers, about the stuff we really care about, like where all the games are, and all that other jazz. So are you ready for that? <laughs> PSX, please welcome back to the stage, Sean Layden. Tell me about this shirt. 
backstage. Well, have to keep something quiet. I guess, but I mean, like, as soon as this. What show... happened to the rest of the IKEA showroom? No, no, no. The couch portion of the programming is over. Oh, is that over? Now? No, we're done with that. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, Sean. Greg. It's PSX. It is. You've been on the stage a long time already talking. Great stuff, by the way. Thank really you, good right. content, good reveals. No one's asked you the hard hitting questions. Right. And I, I reckon that's not going to be you either. No, please. <laughs> you, know, you know how I am. You know who I am. Let's start at the top of the list. Okay. Okay, fire away. When will we be able to change our PlayStation Network name? The elves back at the North Pole have been working on that for quite some time. I've, I've noticed, yes, yes, many PSXs I've talked to people, and they're always working on it yes. very hard. Um, it's, uh, it's a large piece of work. Yeah. And um, it's more complex than I think we... Uh, we hey, 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 hey. <laughs> what, are you a coder? You want to come solve this problem? <laughs> um, let me put it this way. I hope we'll see events occur that you don't have to ask me that question next PSX. Okay, okay. I thank you for that answer. And that's the thing, 2017, a crazy year for games. Oh gosh, yes. I feel like it's been a crazy year for developers and publishers. Yes. Of finally waking up to the fact that in the YouTube, Twitter, the social space world, you can just be honest with people. You can have these conversations, right, where you're uh, uh, saying something is better than saying nothing. You're telling people, hey, we're working on it, we're trying, yep. that's better than just going quiet. Correct. I think, I think there's, not, there's some things we, we, we just can't speak about in detail. Of course. But I think every question deserves an answer. Even if that answer is, I can't answer it. Good answer. <laughs> so now, everybody knows you, you're in charge. You're the big man on campus. Well, they made me sit at the end of the sofa road. You know yeah, I know, that was weird, right? Yeah, that right. didn't that's seem very of, respectful. Hi, Somebody Andy. that in charge. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. Yeah. You've been in the position now since 2014? Uh, yes, president of the sales and marketing company here since 2014 and chairman of the studio since last year. <laughs> Only getting one paycheck, oh. Andy. Well, Andy's on the way out. We've got to start figuring out who comes up next. But, uh, oh, wow, you went there. Uh, what? Well, it's true. Everyone knows the facts. The, here's my question about yes, that. Yes, yes. Have you adjusted to the role? Because you are now in a position where you say anything and it gets picked up as this is Bible truth, the headline says Sony says this. Well, the great thing about being the, the, the CEO of the publishing business and being the chairman of the studios is that, crazily enough, uh, the head of marketing and the head of development, they always agree now. <laughs> we don't have any of those you know, problems. Um, no, it's, it's a privilege, honestly, to be uh, back in uh, Worldwide Studios where I began my career back in 19... 96. And, a while ago. Um, it's been a while. Real quick, uh, go crazy if you were born after 1996. We are old men. We are old, old men, shall we? Yeah. Anyone born in the Eisenhower administration? Okay, my people. All They're right. getting there. They're getting there. <laughs> Is that power, I mean, that position, did it take you a while to wrap your head around, like what that meant? You know, it's... It really is a team effort, right? You know, the days of building a game by, by oneself, unless you're publishing on, let's say, Android or iOS, those days are over, and it's your ability to pull teams together and get them focused in the right direction. You look at some, some games will have 150 or 200 people on it at peak, and that cannot just be driven by one megalomaniac. <laughs> um, it needs a, a whole team around it. The same goes for sales and marketing and publishing. Uh, I see my role as not necessarily, you know, picking the target and leading the charge every time but really to create an environment where people can become successful, where people can get involved with the process. Um, I need, it's, it's like distributed computing, right? I need the brain power of everybody that I work with in order to get the job done. So now I think probably the second big question then for PlayStation at this PSX, are you gonna take any of that computing power mm -hmm. and put it behind giving release dates to the video games? <laughs> Cause I'm getting oh. sick of 2018 <laughs> and we're not even there yet. I think, um, well, we talked about The Last Guardian earlier, right? Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, we can create a rod for our own back if we come out with a date too 
a, a date that's not secure enough too early. Sure. Because we end up moving dates out, and a lot of times people can understand why that may occur. It's just not a, it's not a great place to be. You get all excited, and they tell you, I'm sorry, did I say Christmas was December 25th? It's actually July 9th. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That was Christmas. What happened to that? So you can't move those kind of things out. I think we're trying to get in a place where when, as soon as we get a solid feeling, we are going to express that. But would you rather us just not show the game until that moment, or do you still want to see the game earlier? Well, you want to see it, do you want to see it not or earlier? Yeah. See, because I just feel like, the, you know, <laughs> God of War, I'm sold on. First trailer, done. You know what I yep. need to see more. Yep. Spider-Man, we all know Brian and Insomniac, he is not going to ever put a release date on this. Because he just <laughs> likes to tease you. You follow this guy on Twitter, he's terrible. Every weekend, oh, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to play Spider-Man in my house. I'm like, ooh, I don't like you. <laughs> You, you, you got to put pressure yeah, on some of cut these people out. at some yeah, point. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I know. I know. I, we just hate to, to, to put a date out there and then, and then keep changing it or ha having it be a moving, moving target. And, yeah. Or having to come back and say, oh, that wasn't the date and, you know, we're going to move it again. I mean, there are other things that impact that as well. If you put something on a pre-sale on the store on a certain date, if you move the date, you have to refund all of those pre-sales because the date has moved out of a certain window. So I there's like a lot that. of complexity around that. Yeah. Um, but we're trying to get better at it. I think, I think the games that we've talking about in 2018 will be in 2018. <laughs> uh, You're confident enough in that part. You have a strong feeling about that part. Yes, because if it doesn't, then I, 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 I go old Negan on my people. Whoa, okay. All right, all right. So, speaking of which, is Quantic Dream in trouble? Because I don't think they were supposed to say spring when they said spring earlier. No, they're fine. Okay, they're fine. Okay, they're fine. They have a strong feeling as well. Okay, they're just fine. Sure, they're fine. They, they, they're in there for spring. You know, you know when spring is in Australia. What? <laughs> when is that? <laughs> <laughs> so then, talk to me about this PSX. Your chair seems higher than mine. I, it's on purpose. Talk to me <laughs> about this PSX. These are my chairs. You know, just don't what? think too hard about it. Just okay, sorry. remember there's a thing about authority. And if somebody's, okay. you know, authoritative and P higher, you need to answer the questions honestly and get out there more. All right, all right, all right. Yes, your question. The, the, no, about this PSX, it's a different yeah. PSX. This yes. is a different opening ceremony, right? Yeah. It's yeah. very clearly not a keynote. It's not a press conference. Nobody say that. We're not supposed to say it. Like, was I, li that I like it better this way, actually. Do you guys like this? Yeah. If I'm being 100% honest, one guy's like, no! All right, there's a door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, we, we, a lot of our, our late year announces and, uh, and, and premieres and, and world exclusives and all that kind of stuff went into Paris Game Week. Um, we had it all timed together, like, like, sure. like Ghost of Tsushima, we brought it out there. Uh, it, was, it was very important for, because you all have PlayStation cousins living in Europe, and they're heavy gamers just like all of you are. And so we want to bring, you know, new stuff, stuff hot baking right out of the oven uh, to them as well. And it just didn't give us a whole lot for this show. So we talked about what should we do here, and we thought maybe, maybe we kind of turn this into more of a, a, a dialogue or, or, or ability to, to, to meet the developers and the studio chiefs behind the games. Yeah. You know, to get Corey to come out here and, and then Herman. I thought that was a, a really good chance for, for you guys to get to know who the people are that are making the games you love. I'm a big fan of that. I make my living on just talking. So yeah, that's all great. And a good living it is. Thank you. Uh, Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry about the changes. I don't know what they're thinking. We'll talk about it later. Um, do you, was that an educated decision moving forward? Because I feel like I love PSX. I've said that, you know, and I'm not Thank just you. saying it. You know what I mean? Like, it's my favorite show because it's, it's a lot like Kind of Funny Live. You look to the left, you look to the right, you can talk to anyone here, and you're all into the same thing. PlayStation. That's why you're here. It's why it's great. Right. A few people like that. Uh, <laughs> do you think that what you're doing here, having this open dialogue, the way you're running PSX, making it more of an experience on the floor, because I walked the show floor with Shuhei earlier today, guys. It's awesome. Yeah. Is that a move to redefine or at least reestablish what you think the identity of PlayStation is? Because I've talked on the shows a lot mm -hmm. in the way that I thought PlayStation 4's launch, which has obviously been such a huge success, was so strong. The February event was so strong because it was you guys coming out and being like, 
All right, no cell processor. This is the box. It runs awesome games. Let's talk about games. Games, 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 games. Yes. And then it was, you know, we rolled into E3 and there was a great video of Adam Boys and Shuhei Yoshida talking about how they share videos. Yes. And it was like, they get it, they're there. This is PlayStation. And then PSX happened yeah. and it was like this yeah. great ball of momentum. And then we saw a shift with E3s recently where it was, all right, Shoe's not going to come out. You're barely going to come out. It's just yes. going to be trailers, and that's how we're going to run it. Mm -hmm. And it felt like, ooh, are we going back to a PlayStation 3 era, era PlayStation that wants to be more behind the scenes, or? Uh, no. I'm, well, I'm not sure what you mean by behind the scenes, but um, I think we found that we have this great opportunity every year now with PSX mm -hmm. to have this kind of let's get by the fireside up close and personal and let's you know, speak our truths and tell our stories. And I think E3, really, it's a trade show. Yeah. That's what it is, the trade show. And we have such great content lined up for that. I really felt, why would I, I don't need to come up and say, on the next scene you're going to see, um, Bob is having a little trouble with his son and he wants to go over here and get, get a kill an alligator. You know, you just show you what it is, right? And put it up on Second the Second game in development? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, just having so many problems with my son. It's because of the alligator. <laughs> Let's go, boy. Yeah. Um, so, we, are, we, are we shouting out greatest hits? Or? I think they yelled out karaoke. I don't understand. <laughs> they don't, they understand. So I think, I think this is what PlayStation Experience is, is trying to be, is to, is, is to be that real connected, engaged um, a moment. You know, for the next couple of days, not only we go on the floor and you're going to be able to see um, some great game plays and, and some, you know, there'll be a lot of demos there as well, but you also, there's some, a lot of experiential stuff. I think maybe you're going to go in there and think that, is this a, is this a game show or is this a trade, a, a, is a theme park, right? Mm. And um, we want to get you closer to the visions that the creators have for their games and why they make and why they do what they do. You'll see a lot of the development teams and, and creators, you know, on the floor themselves, you know, enjoying uh, what we're going to do here the next couple of days. And you know, I hope to meet a lot of you as I'm, as I'm warming the floor as well. This is the kind of show you want to do. E3 is really, it's kind of glitzy, but it's right there. You, 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 want, to, you want to tell that story, you want to make that mark to say, this is what PlayStation games are all about, pow, 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 pow. What did you think of E3 being open to consumers this year? I thought, I'll be honest with you guys, I think uh, the ESA sold 15,000 consumer tickets for that. And it really brought the crowd to the edge of pain. Yeah. And um, I won't bore you guys with the, with the details around it, but if you're going to design a trade show or a consumer show, there's a completely two different beasts. And the way you do it, not only physically, the way you have to make rows wider, you have to have those experiences shorter to get more people through. Um, we have to determine, you know, E3 is like in the middle of the highway. It's going to get hit by cars on both sides now. Yeah. So it's got, to, it's got to choose a lane to be in. Yeah, that's not the way to drive. <laughs> so then looking at 2018, mm -hmm. What is your vision for PlayStation in 2018? Well, I think we continue along our path, um, putting my Worldwide Studios hat on. Um, I think uh, in Worldwide Studios, we have a lot of energy, a lot of devotion, a lot of love around storytelling, around narrative. You know, some people call that single-player gaming. We do have most of our eggs in that basket, just because that's, that's the thing we do well, I think. Humble, in my humble opinion, IMHO. Um, and I don't want to go to any of those teams and, and tell them, you know, I, I read in a magazine that there's something called Games as a Service, maybe one of those. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. Um, so that's, that's what we do. We do Horizon, we do God of War, we do Detroit, we, Uncharted, The Last of Us. These are the things we're going to continue to, you know, lean into really strong. So I see our, our, our content story, you know, continue to play out that way. As a platform, I think um, we're going to see, um, you know, again, humbly, continued dominance of PlayStation in the game market. Um, and as we see the, the, what we call the install base, I mean, a number of people have your thing, the install base of PSVR growing to a critical mass point, I think we're going to see um, a lot more content developers uh, jumping in there. Of course, Worldwide Studios will be there, and we'll, things like we saw today, Firewall, that's awesome. You guys should really definitely get a chance to play that over the next couple of days. Um, we're going to see some more uh, energy in that respect as well. Did P PlayStation VR ca catch you off guard, how successful it's been? Yeah, well, it caught us really off guard when we, when we launched it a year ago and it ran out. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh there's no more. Um, and then so the momentum kind of slowed down because we were still trying to get the hardware to catch up with that. And so we've almost kind of put it into a relaunch mode right now, yeah. you know, getting it out there. 
and titles like Skyrim was, was, was super cool. That's also playable at the show. You guys should check that out. Uh, Doom VFR. Yep. What's the F in VFR? You know, nobody knows. Um, yeah. Nobody knows no, what the F, F stands for. those Doom things. And yeah. Stuff like that. yeah. Fromage. Fromage, like exactly. <laughs> the cheese edition. Yeah. That's exactly what it's um, about. And then the other titles you see coming out, this you know, Bravo team is on the floor. Uh, you saw, saw the picture of the, uh, the inpatient, pretty creepy. So I think we're getting a good breadth of content coming out. Yeah. And um, uh, it caught us by surprise, but, uh, but we're fully committed to the, f to, to the platform, to the format. I have more VR questions, but your time's already up. OK. Which sucks. There you go. But the next man can answer these questions for me about VR. You can ask him. He's a, he's a fan of VR. Mm -hmm. He plays it. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for Shuhei Yoshida. Thanks, man. All right, Shoe. Take him on. Hey. Hey. Oh, yeah. So, it's just the best. It's the best part. If you ever see Shoe, just give him hugs. Give him hugs. Look at all these people just leaving, Shoe. Now, again, to clarify mistakes of PSX past, they were saying Shoe. They weren't booing you. <laughs> this was a big yeah. moment of contention before. Yeah, I was worried. Yeah. <laughs> This year, it's much closer, everybody. You like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What does PSX mean to you? Well, I always say PSX is my favorite show of the year. Yeah, this why? Is just the thousands of happy people. Everybody smiling, all love PlayStation. They're paying a lot of money to come. <laughs> <laughs> they got love PlayStation, right? So. Does that blow your mind? I mean, you've been with PlayStation for so long to see the audience actually go somewhere each and every year? Well, we never had, I never had this chance. You know, I've been to E3 and Gamescom and all these events, TGS, but um, I don't think we had this dedicated, like a PlayStation only big consumer yeah. event. And it just gets better and better that the booth that uh, our teams created this year is amazing. It's the whole production and uh, that's a you know, walkthrough of the gaming like uh, stages. Uh, some of the games are not, you know, playable. We are not able to provide. So some of sure. very creative people came up with um, the other things for you to do. So, so, of course, president of Sony Worldwide Studios. Yep. You know all these first party things. All this stuff's happening. Mm -hmm. Infamously, Infamous. in 2015, you came on our E3 live show. Yep. And rubbed it in kind of funny's face that you had already played Sucker Punch's game? Well, I said... No, no, you rubbed it in our face. You don't, <laughs> don't try to walk it back. No, I said I played something in Sucker Punch's office, and they are making something. Uh -huh. Yeah, they exist, right? They yeah, they exist. Yeah, I know. I know. They were infamous. Up there in Bellevue being real quiet for a long, long time. Yeah, what, what's great about working with Sucker Punch is they are so focused on getting the game feel right the mechanic, the feel sure. that when you have the controller, you forget you're holding the controller. You feel like you are like a really the character. Yeah. So they spend a long time, you know, at the very, very early stages of the development of the Ghost of Tsushima, you know, they always had this prototype gaming working. So I got to be able to play some of the early prototype that went, you know, many, many iterations. And, uh, so I've been playing the game over maybe two years. <laughs> How is it? Tell me something about it. No, the fact that it wasn't opening this show, I don't know what you guys are doing, what kind of clown shoe operation this is. What is going on with this game? Tell me about the game. Who is the character? How big is the open world? Yeah, so it's, a, it's an open world game. It's the it's largest uh, game that they have, well, in, you know, uh, Sucker Punch has yeah. created much larger than Infamous Second Son. And the, it's beautiful, like, like the you know, trailer that we showed was all you know, rendered in the game engine. Yeah. And uh, it's always already playable, the sword fighting. And it's, uh, you know, we are not talking about lots of uh, gameplay. Oh, I've noticed. Yet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it already feels and plays very well. So okay. it's a large, you know, um, island of Tsushima. So actually. You know, 
we came so close to get the leak. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Early, early this year or late last year, you know, because Sucker Punch has, uh, guys have been visiting the island of Tsushima many times for doing a research, you know, taking photos, talking to the people there. Sure. Uh, you know, learning about the history and the culture and, uh, you know, nature there. And that became a story in the local newspaper, like a Tsushima <laughs> Times or something. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a small piece, but uh, friends of friends of, you know, our, our development team in Japan was let know that, oh, you know, I learned about this, you know, uh, Sucker Punch people from uh, Seattle visiting Tsushima to do research for the next game, and we are like, ha, freaked <laughs> out, and uh, don't talk about it. And uh, luckily, the, the paper, the circulation is only a few thousand. Yeah. And, uh, the None of them were on NeoGAF at the time. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it was only available in the island of Tsushima. Oh, wow. So, yeah, they so had that story never came outside of that island. So we are like, oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, they, 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 they are so excited yeah. that, uh, you know, large company, large production house is building Tsushima and uh, they respect. They, 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 they are so excited that the game will be made, you know, based in Tsushima history. So, yeah. So, so that paper guy wrote the story. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> he, got, he got the scoop. Where were you, IGN? Yeah, I, yeah. So I, I was afraid that Kotaku Japan or IGN Japan might pick, pick it up. Do you find it disturbing that even in an auditorium this large, you can make out Marty's laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, uh. You, Hi, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> How much Last of Us Part Two have you played? Last of Us Part No, I haven't played any. Okay. Don't lie to me. No. <laughs> no, I have No, I have not. Yeah? Yeah. And yeah. I haven't played uh, Death Stranding either. Oh, really? Yeah. Why not? You just go down there. You're their boss. You can well, go in and you make well, things happen. I, I can just wait and enjoy, you know. <laughs> Are your hands off with, your hands off with the <laughs> Yes. Yeah, they don't have to do anything. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Just tell me, what, is, it, is, it, is it her mom? Is, I mean, has that been confirmed? Because that's what it seems like. And then she's pregnant? Is that what the knife's about? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's my question. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. no. no. <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was watching, you know, news, you know, video, like, uh, yeah. talking about, you know, trying to figure it out. Do you think Joel is alive, or do you think he's a ghost? Ghost of uh, Tsushima? No, not, no, we're <laughs> not. You don't have to plug the game we just talked about. Oh, another great game. I played through the uh, uh, Shadow of the Colossus remake. Okay. That's an amazing game. You know, luckily I've forgotten like half the Colossi, Colossus. Sure, yeah. How to, you know, it's just beautiful and it plays well. You know, they, you know, they sped up the frame rate. You know, it's, uh, I think it's 60 frames on PS4 Pro. Okay. And 30 frames stable on regular PS4. It plays so well. They reconfigure the controls and uh, still, you know, trying to keep the uh, um, original intent. Sure. Of the but it should be a struggle. The impact. Yeah. yeah. It should make you mad. The camera should wig yeah, out. But, but yeah, yeah, I couldn't stop playing. I, I, you know, I played through the game for over two or three days, but it was amazing experience. How have you? How I, I know it's not a. This we were talking about this backstage. Uh -huh. On Kind of Funny Games Daily, we had a conversation, me and Andrea, about if second party exists and is Insomniac and Spider-Man, that's a second party release. And we went back and forth for a while, and then Insomniac just tweeted at us, and they were just like, no, we're a third party developer. It's a first party game. Mm -hmm. So have you seen that? Have you played that? Do you know about that? Can you ask Brian when it's coming out? Actually, I played uh, Spider-Man. Okay, good. Yeah. Tell uh, me about whole, this. whole sequence of the E3 demo. Yeah. It looked like some uh, like uh, uh, scripted sequence, but actually it's an open world game, another open world game, and uh, actually the, every time I played, it played differently. Of course, there are like uh, switches you can trigger some event, but entirely it's controllable. And uh, you might have seen Brian, you know, played uh, different parts, and uh, you know, it feels so great. When's that one coming out? Um, I don't know what we are saying. So 2018. Yeah, I know, I know you're saying 2018. 2018. I know, yeah, a lot of people yeah. are saying 2018. We are not saying like uh, early or, you know, spring or, 
right? You're not. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah. Well, are you? I don't know. No, no, no. We are saying early for God of War, spring for Detroit, and uh, February for Shadow of the Shadow Colossus. Process, uh, yeah. So now them, okay. I guess. More, more, yeah. I guess. More information that isn't. <laughs> I guess. Real information, I guess. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other game I'm, I'm playing is that what? Days Gone. That's another open world <laughs> horror game. Yeah. And where, 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 yeah, okay, what's going on with Days Gone? Where? Days Gone is, uh, it's not playable, unfortunately, here. But uh, there's awesome setup in the booth. But, but the game's playable, I think, through now. So it's in the phase of, you know, doing the tweaks and the polish and testing and uh, is it good it's a, it's a big game right that's the thing when i was talking to sony benedy 3 about it it yeah. still seems like yeah we haven't seen what the game actually is because the game obviously is shooting it is taking on the, mm. the tweakers the freakers mm. but freakers freakers the zombies you know, and so no they're not freakers freaker my apologies everybody freakers tm playstation <laughs> It seems like when we see it, it is, all right, let's fight them. But in reality, when you talk about it, they talk about it being the open world and how your bike's a character and how you have to upgrade it and keep the gas in it and get supplies. It seems like it's not going to be just as action-focused as, you know, demos have led us to believe. Um, yeah, there are lots of uh, stories uh, this time around yeah. as well. So some of the trailers are focused on the, you know, struggles of the characters and uh, uh, death or, you know. Uh, but it's pretty much an action game. It's yeah. like, uh, you know, approach the situation. Each situation you can approach anyway. Well, that was the cool thing about Behind Closed Doors D3, right? Mm -hmm. Is that it was the same demo, but this time it was at night. Mm -hmm. And so fewer people, you were using snow, it was being stealthy, you were not being hurt as easily. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, time of the day changes and uh, the, the, you know, the uh, difficulty or the approach you have to take each situation changes. So it's very cool. Talking about you overseeing the first party, right? Mm -hmm. What all these guys? Oh, I've been playing Dreams as well. <laughs> there's, there's a Dreams booth on the floor. If they want to know about Dreams, they'll go there. They'll find out about it. Okay. Talking about releases. You're, do you guys, how do you decide who goes and in what order? Because I feel when, if, when we see Last of Us mm -hmm. at Paris Games Week, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, for sure we're not going to see Days Gone then. And then it was that interesting question of, well, would we see anything at PSX that was new? Because I feel like the games on paper, in the trailer, in just a glance, seem so similar that you can't have them come out one on top of each other. You need to give them room to breathe both in their marketing beats, I'd assume, right? Well, when the games come out, they're very different. But, yeah. but I, I you know, understand where you're coming from. And uh, your question is about which game to show in which... How you decide, show. I mean, really, more yeah, than Yeah, so anything. it's pretty much so. Um, we tend to try to do big, like, uh, media showcase twice a year. Mm -hmm. Like uh, E3 and uh, Paris this year, and E3 and PSX last year. And uh, teams have the, you know, development schedules and uh, have milestones and uh, some, you know, optimum time to showcase the, you know, review or showcase the, you know, gameplay or put demos on the show floor. So the, you know, the calendars of these entire games and the, you know, PR production team have a conversation with each studios and try to uh, position. Sure. Yeah, so that, that, that's a long, you know, long process. You know, it takes probably over six months to produce one show. So, so the, our PR team must have been working on, <laughs> or, or starting yeah. you know, preparation for next year's E3 already. So when, I, the way it works, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you guys, uh, the first, uh, you know, Naughty Dog, whoever, a first party, a studio wraps a game, then they start prototyping or deciding what they want to work on next time, and then uh -huh. they come to you and pitch you, right? Mm -hmm. So was there concern about Sony, uh, Ben Studios getting involved into the, the zombie world when you do have The Last of Us, you do have this key franchise? Uh, well, in terms of the particular, because Last of Us, Last of Us already existed, and yeah. this game going came later, uh, there's a you know, conversation a little bit between uh, Ben team and Naughty Dog to make sure that the direction that you know, these teams are going are different enough. Sure. Yeah. And you feel that you've hit it? Yeah. And we'll see both these games when? 
When, when, when was it g o t They is gone 2018. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Right. I, I have memory. You, <laughs> I have memory. Oh, yeah. Uh, great. Okay, great. And I don't remember what we've been saying for last week. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Neil Druckmann. Yeah. Yeah. Zipping his lips, not saying anything about that. Right. They just put out these trailers. Some people get mad. Well, that that, that says something. Yeah, yeah. What is your take here on PlayStation VR? Because when PlayStation VR first was getting ready to come out, you were the one walking around, beating the drum, telling me how great it would be. I got it. I agree, it's great. Thank you. How are you, how are you dealing with it right now? The fact that, like we were talking to Sean, you weren't prepped for the success you found. Uh, newest numbers come out, 2 million units sold, which is something. I guess, why do you... 2 million sold through. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Fans. <laughs> why are you guys finding success with Play PlayStation VR, whereas other VR people seem to be middling more? Um, actually, when you talk about other VR people, like, uh, because VR is such a passion project for all of us, not just our teams who worked on PSVR, but the, the you know, Palma and the, those Oculus guys, you know, who worked on, jumped on that early, and, uh, you know, Valve guys are uh, preaching and uh, teaching a lot of the uh, uh, research they've been doing. So it's a small community, yeah. and we respect each other, and we discuss, and uh, uh, so we understand, you know, we had the same kind of passion and goal to make this amazing new medium, new technology in the hands of lots of people, uh, in the hands of, you know, game developers and creators and the media companies, people, creative people to use. So, um, so um, I think success of any of us is a success for all of us, mm. you know, because we are, you have to experience to really understand the potential of this new medium. That's the diff most difficult part all of us are uh, uh, struggling. You have to communicate the game. We, can't, we cannot just show the trailer it's because the experience is so different. So any of us uh, releasing a new title or doing the demos, you know, do doing this kind of uh, event and uh, getting more people to try good VR for the first time, yeah is a win for all of us, really working on good VR. So when you were coming around before release, yeah. you were talking to me and telling me, you know, this is PlayStation 1 again. Like, mm -hmm. we're not going to come out of the gate and be where we're at with PlayStation 4. We see it as a 20-year process. Yep. With what you've had in terms of success so far, but also what you've seen with just people, how much they want to play VR, what kind of games they want to play in VR, are you still, you think, in that mindset that this is this long-term thing? Do you think mm -hmm. you're going in a different direction than where you initially thought it was going to go? Yeah, yeah, so what I was saying, I've been saying is the um, things that we are seeing, you know, for the launch of PSVR and those, you know, uh, first consumer VR product, uh, very, you know, similar feeling that I worked on when original first, you know, PlayStation was the very first consumer-based, you know, gaming system that allowed the game developers to use the real-time 3D, 3G, 3D graphics for the first time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, lots of new experience uh, and uh, lots of genre were created and the advancement for the last 20 years, you know, when you look at, you know, game like God of War or, you know, Last of Us, it's amazing and it just keep going and going. So, you know, I can see, you know, PSVR and the first sets of these consumer-based uh, VR systems is like the first generation. Yeah. And uh, we can see for, you know, long-term future that the creative people and tech people, because the VR is not a new concept. You know, it's been around since like uh, 1960s. Yeah, so lots of research being already made. You know, we've been waiting for these technologies to advance enough so that we can make it reality. So, you know, there are a lot of, of all the things that all different companies want to work on to make it better and more exciting. And the, the pace and the amount of money and the amount, you know, number of great companies, smart people working on to try to solve issues around in VR is uh, mind-blowing. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah that makes uh, progress faster for everyone. Yeah, so the, 
Um, what we have, I have seen for the last two or three years is amazing. And we are not, you know, games and is leading because the, you know, VR, good VR requires um, powerful system like PS4 of or, course. you know, high-end PC. Uh, so the gamers are the first users and the game creators are the first developers to work on. But when you look at, you know, all the things happening, the all different kinds of industries are finding the good use of these new, you know, VR technologies. And the, uh, so the, um, um, you will uh, see or you know, use VR system in the different part of your life without you realizing it you know, pretty soon. So uh, that I, I think I'm going to realize I'm using it. <laughs> I think I'll okay. know when I put it in. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but the, the, so uh, what we are um, talking about in the future, you know, this can happen or that can happen. I, I, I think looking back in the future, uh, that will happen sooner than, you know, um, um, you thought. than we, we are thinking now. All right. So I, I'm so happy with the uh, progress that we are all making. And the new games, like I've been playing the Skyrim VR. It's yeah. amazing yeah. to be immersed in that. And, uh, you know, games like um, uh, Moss. Uh, Moss is awesome. Yeah, I can't wait for Moss. Very pretty. Manifest 99, the Invisible Hour. You know, lots of people are experimenting with different use of uh, VR technologies. Huh? Manifest 99, that's the one you tweeted out recently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the one that doesn't have trophies, right? Right, right, right. Why is that happening? It's yeah, a video yeah. game shoe. You are, you are giving professional advice to the developer. I am. Put trophies in your game. Uh, who wants to see a video game? Let's play some video games. Who wants to stop talking? Yeah? Trevor Starkey does. Um, shoe. Yep. We're going to bring out some people to play some games. Are you down for that? Okay. Uh, it's a game called Concrete Genie. Yes. Are you familiar with it? Absolutely. You want to see the developers there from Pixel Opus come out here? Yep. All right. Let's do it. People haven't been following everything. Yes. What is Concrete Genie? Uh, so Concrete Genie is a game about a boy called Ash who can bring his paintings to life. Uh, and so all of our unique and uh, special gameplay mechanics are about having fun with paint. And that's why we're here today, actually. We thought after we announced the game in Paris, which we had an amazing response to, we got a lot of questions about how does the painting actually work. And We've known for a long time that the first time we were going to debut the game and show it live, we wanted to be here at PSX with all of you. Um, and so we thought this would be a great opportunity to come and say hello. Yeah. Well, hello. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys ready to say hello? <laughs> so what are we doing? What are we going to jump into? Um, so Jing, our game designer over there. Hi, Jing. Hi, Jing. Hi. <laughs> She's going to get started on the demo. Um, so one of the uh, most important parts of the game is that we want to make anyone feel like they can be an artist. Sure. Now, this has been something that's been on my mind since Paris. <laughs> You're going to look me in the face and tell me this isn't an infamous tie-in, that this isn't Delson. <laughs> Literally the same red hat. He's got a bag on. He's doing graffiti. You just ripped off Sucker Punch, and everybody knows it. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that, Greg. Um, <laughs> You know what? It's completely coincidental. Um, and when, we, when we, we, we showed the trailer at Paris Games Week, I actually got an email from uh, Nate Fox teasing me about that as well. Yeah. And so I had to assure him that it was completely coincidental as well. I say you lean into it now. It's there, just an infamous prequel. There, there is that option. <laughs> um, yeah, right? Yeah, Give up all your <laughs> dreams of the game you're trying to make. 
shove it into this? You know, it anyway. genuinely was completely coincidental. You, when, you, um, when you're making a game, you go through so many revs and iterations on the character. Um, and we just ended up with here for a lot of other reasons. He used to have a blue hat. And I think when we changed it to a red hat, it suddenly became... <laughs> That's when it happens. Evocative of Delson, yeah. All right, so what is happening right now? We're just painting? Yeah, so we use the, um, the motion controls in the DualShock 4 pad. And so you can see Jing motioning there. Um, and you have these selection of brushes that you find as you play through the game. Uh, and we call this living paint. And the goal is to take any of the marks and the gestures that you make in the world and grow them into something beautiful. Um, and a big part of our player fantasy is making sure that anybody who plays the game can feel like an artist. I, I can't draw at all in real life, but in this game, you know, I can pull something together that looks half decent. <laughs> Was that a concern when you got going, right? Like, I, did, what was the original iteration? Mm -hmm. Was it freehand painting? And then you're like, oh, well, what about the no, people? Um, no, yeah, that's a good question. So this is actually the third iteration on the painting mechanics that we've had in the game. Um, and we realized that getting the right balance between um, agency and assistance so that whatever you do, you feel like you made it. But what do we add to that through the technology that we've built? to make it something beautiful, but you have to still feel like you did it. Sure. Um, and so this, this is where we've ended up, and we're really happy with how it's turned out. How long have you guys been working on it? Quite some time. Yeah? We, we have been on this now for nearly three years. Um, and so it's a labor of love uh, that, that's kind of been coming together slowly but surely. Um, and, you know, we're a very small team. That's the other thing. And how many people? Uh, there's 14 people on the team. Um, and we have a couple of other contractors and interns, depending on, you know, what part of the process we're in. Uh, but it's, it's very small, and that's why iteration on a small team is the most important thing. Um, but it's a different type of process. I believe it. So then, we're showing the painting right now, mm. but how does this get used in the gameplay? Is it a puzzle game? Like, how do you describe it? So it's a third-person action adventure, uh, and later on next year, we're going to be showing more of the action elements in the game. Okay. Um, but because this is such a pivotal thing, and you know, one of the most striking things about the game, we wanted to kind of get out there with this first. Uh, and there are puzzle-solving mechanics in there. And in a little bit, Jing is actually going to go around the corner and start painting creatures, which is oh. another really important part of the game. Uh, and the story and the theme of the game is, is about bullying. And one of the reasons that the, these creatures are so important is that they're the friends that Ash wished he had in, in real life. Uh, and they have a really important gameplay function as well. And depending on how you paint the creatures, uh, the colors that you use, they have different abilities. And that's really where the puzzle solving comes in. So if you paint a red creature, for example, it will have fire abilities, and then you can go and solve fire puzzles. Gotcha. If you paint it with yellow, it will have uh, electricity powers and things like that. Is there going to be just a canvas mode, like a relaxed mode, to jump in and not worry about the story or not doing that? We are looking at that. I think that's a, a great thing to have in there um, so that people can just go and completely relax. Sure. Um, because the the bullies actually exist in the world as AI, and they have a, an important part to play in how, you, yeah. how you're able to paint as you go through the world. And so having some way to just sit there and relax and just chill out and do whatever you want is, is a good part of it. Now, when we were backstage talking, <laughs> you blew my mind. So Pix Lopez is a first party. Right. You're actually working out of the San Mateo office. That's right. Yeah, so in uh, Tucked Away, hidden on the back floor of, of one of the floors in the global headquarters is Pixlopus. And we're the only development that's happening there. So we're kind of flying under the radar, but we get to kind of make our own creative IP, which is quite a unique situation. Shuhei, that means you're their boss. It does. No, Connie Booth is uh, <laughs> their boss. And Scott Rohde is uh, Connie's boss. But we all know Scott Rohde doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? Uh, for <laughs> For you, Shu, yeah. why was this a game PlayStation wanted to get behind? Why was this a game you wanted them to make? Oh, yeah, so they, after they finished the Untwine, um, they came up with the wall flow mm -hmm. concept, ideas, sketches. And uh, I was let in to see all of the different concepts. And uh, this concept stood out. And I was like, well, you know, I can see, you know, I, I'm. I'll be playing this game. And Dom and the team said, wow, well, everybody picked the same yeah. concept. Right? That was an unusual moment. Like we, one, of our, one of the things that happened when we, we kind of are in our dream phase is we came up with 10 different concepts for a game. 
and we go through an exercise where we imagine the gameplay and the story, and we do a little one sheet where we try and picture it as a finished product. Um, and then we do a bunch of supporting artwork and prototypes to, to try and figure that out. And when we came to the idea for this game, which actually came from our VFX artist, Ashwin, um, the boards were like five times longer, there was loads more to talk about, and you could actually imagine it as a gameplay experience, which is obviously the most important thing. So that's something we glossed over in that conversation mm. there, but Entwine mm. was the studio's first game. Yes. At the time, who was making up the staff at the studio? Because you guys have brought in a bunch of students, right? That's, like, that's correct, yeah. So everybody on the team were graduates from different academic gaming programs uh, in the States. We had the original six were from the Carnegie Mellon Entertainment Technology Center. Uh, and then we had another couple of students from the San Jose State uh, Animation and Illustration Program as well. Uh, and then it was uh, myself and Jeff Sangali, who I think is over there somewhere, art director. Yeah, um, so, so the you know, group of very talented, young, passionate people and uh, two mentors. <laughs> <laughs> the old men, yeah. the two old the people there to make veterans. sure these kids knew what they were doing. Right. And then after we did Entwined, um, we knew that if we were going to carry on making games that were uh, investing in, in, in a message and, and were trying to make an emotional connection, we wanted to do it in a genre and at a scale that was easier to access. Uh, and we all love third-person action adventure games, so we thought this would be a great platform uh, in order to kind of make something that was imaginative and a bit different, but was maybe a bit easier to get into than sure. it was. When you start this studio and bring mm -hmm. in all these young folks who are super mm -hmm. ambitious and ready to go, but green as hell, yeah. are you thinking it's going to work? Are you <laughs> panicking that this could easily blow up in your face? Um, in this case, no. The, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, when I was at school, there were no courses that you could do that would teach game development. There just was nothing you could do academically that, to get you ready for making games. And so when I started uh, a long, long time ago, uh, everything was learned on the job. Yeah. And uh, what we found when we were going to these different academic programs is that the tools and the kind of the abilities and knowledge that they had just from their studies was you know, equivalent to what I was getting five years into the job. Wow. So they, they were actually teaching us stuff on, on how, you know, the best way to kind of put things together. And we run the team with a completely flat hierarchy. So it's been a really interesting, lively collaboration at all times, basically. And we've added a few more um, senior people, um, you know, to kind of help increase our capacity and, and ambition and scope as well. Um, but we always maintain that, that, that kind of... Um, young part of the workforce just to make sure that we're, you know, one of the main missions of the group is to make sure that people have an amazing start to their time in the games industry. Uh, and that's so awesome. That's, that's a great mission statement yeah. to have for the group. Mm -hmm. So then, to wrap it up, put a pin in uh, Concrete Genie. We're going to see mm -hmm. more of it in 2018, obviously. Yes. See the action adventure side of it. We're going to be out next year. But there is more to it than just the painting, right? Absolutely. I feel like, it, yeah. like I'm tranquil right now. Yeah. The music is good, the art is beautiful, but like <laughs> there's a game to it there that's actually going to challenge Absolutely, you. Absolutely, yeah. There is a, an action-packed third-person adventure in there as well, um, and we're just kind of pacing out how we reveal that to everybody over the next few months. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for coming by. Did you guys like it? <laughs> that's Concrete Genie. Oh, right. Oh, now you're sure about this, right? I'm pretty sure. He's pretty... All right, so here's what we're going to do. Somebody stop me. We're going to tell... No, there's no one to stop you. That's why the problem is. <laughs> this is a shirt for so Concrete Genie. We got these today. This is our, our first crew shirt. It's the first Concrete Genie shirt. And um, we, we love them. It's designed by our, our character illustrator, Lansing, on team. And we thought it would be awesome if we gave one to everybody here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but again, to be clear, he's saying that, and no one told me to say that. So is it going to happen? I don't know. Don't get mad if you leave and there is no shirt. There's probably a shirt, but who knows? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure there is. You're pretty sure there's shirts? Yeah. All right, then. When you leave... Oh, you got one. You didn't even leave yet. Did you steal that? How did you get it? <laughs> Ah, uh, you went to the bathroom, came back in, they gave it to you. All right, cool. There you go. Right, they're shirts. They're real Proof. shirts out there. A big yeah. deal for Concrete Genie, obviously, yeah. their first shirt. Yeah. Thank you. Well, where did cry? Thank you for coming out, Dom. Cheers, Greg. Pleasure. Yeah. Shuhei, as always, thank you so much.
You're a gem. We love you. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, that's the end of the PSX kickoff. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Play cool games. Go see cool panels. Be cool to one another. <laughs>